Good afternoon, and God bless you abundantly. This is Pastor Edward Santongo um, for our uh, evening, afternoon Bible study, whatever your time zone is. Uh, it is afternoon here at it's 4.30, almost 4.30. Uh, Lubbock time, which is uh, Central Standard Time uh, in Texas. And uh, you are welcome to our Bible study today. God bless you abundantly. I'm truly honored and humbled to uh, be the vessel through which uh, uh, you are going to hear these uh, words. Um, and I do believe that you're going to be blessed. Uh, I'm going to start with a prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Lord, I honor and glorify you. And I come before your throne of grace to find grace and mercy in this time of need, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everything that you're doing, that you're about to do that you've already done, uh, that you did over 2,000 years ago, Lord, uh, when you died on the cross for each and every one of us and now made it possible for us to come boldly to the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, to find grace and mercy in our time of need. Lord, thank you for that blood that you shed on the cross and we come before you and ask you for the forgiveness of our sins. Anything we have said or done or thought that has not glorified your name, Lord, we pray that you purify us, uh, forgive us and sanctify us with the precious blood of your son jesus in the mighty name of jesus and everybody say amen the word of god declares in first john 1 7 that if we are willing to come to the marvelous light and that is god our heavenly father who sent his only begotten son jesus specifically to destroy the works of the devil and the blood that blood that was shed on the cross over two thousand years ago is sufficient to wash our sins away and so i do believe that today once we repent and we just um, as for the forgiveness of our sins, that blood washes our sins away and the sins are remembered no more. They are blotted out, but they're, they're blotted out from God's books. He remembers them no more and he covers us with the blood of his son Jesus and that's what purifies us, that's what gives us the righteousness. Uh, the wages of sin is death. If you choose to stay in sin and unrighteousness, the wages of sin is death. But if you choose Christ, uh, that gift, the gift of God, it is uh, that gift of God that gives us eternal life. And that is through Christ, the Son of the living God, who is the gift, praise God. And so uh, you are welcome uh, to our Bible study. We say we uh, study about the cross. We're going to continue to study about the cross. What does it mean to uh, come to the cross? What does it mean to be a born again believer? What is the requirement? Is it a requirement as in a law or a what what do we have to do ourselves? What a good place in Ephesians two verse eight to nine that we partake of that grace by faith. It is by grace through faith that we are made children of God in the kingdom of God. Praise God. So faith in Christ Jesus. Where I say in John seven verse thirty eight. Praise God. That whoever believes in me, he said, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He meant the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. Let's start from John 7, 38, praise God. And so it's by grace of faith that we partake of that which God has promised for everyone, every believer, praise God. And that we begin to have the inheritances from the kingdom of God, the blessings that God has purposed for his children, his sons, his daughters, praise God. You and I, that were created in his own image, praise God. And how do we recognize that? How do we how are we reconciled to God? It is through Christ the Holy Spirit. How do we get to that image? And that image of a God, our Heavenly Father, God is Spirit, and the desires that uh, we worship Him in spirit and truth, that we learn the word in spirit and truth, pray in spirit and truth, and so Christ, the Son of the Living God, is the mediator of the new covenant under which. We live that was sealed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, now making it possible for us to be reconciled to our Father in heaven. Praise God. And so in John 3 3, that's why Christ says, and um, uh, to this man, Nicodemus, who did not understand, or rather, he wanted to know why God, why Christ, the Son of the Living God, is being used by God mightily, uh, seeing the miracle signs and wonders. In fact, it says in verse 2, it says, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs. So he saw the signs, the signs and wonders, praise the Son of God, which follow those that believe. 
which Christ said in Mark 16, 15 to 17, that these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak in new texts. They are for non-believers to be drawn to God. Praise God to be drawn to Christ, the Son of the living God. So don't be bossing around because God is using in mighty ways. It is truly, uh, it is honor and glory uh, to, 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 to be used by God. Praise God. We are honored. Praise God. To be used by God and the honor and glory really belongs to Christ. Praise God. We as vessels should not take that honor and glory. Praise God. That belongs to Christ. Praise God. We are to be humble. We we humble ourselves. It is a humbling experience. I should say that. Praise God. And the honor and glory in that experience goes to Christ, the Son, living God. Praise God. And our Father in heaven, who sent Him. Praise God. Christ said that these works, the works that I do, you'd be able to do even more that my father in heaven may be glorified in the sun so as believers as born again believers when god uses us to to do all the things that god wants to do the honor and glory belongs to christ not to you the person praise god it is christ that is glorified praise god our father is glorified in christ christ working in and through us praise god not we we as human beings being glorified praise god so i don't know if that makes sense to you a lot of times people take want to take the the glory and that's a, a mark of satan satan wants to be glorified the holy spirit if you have a whole gift of the holy spirit if you have the holy spirit which christ said this is a very scripture that you must be born of water and spirit in order for you to be born again and the holy spirit himself does not glorify himself he glorifies the finished work of christ he glorifies the father in heaven praise god so anytime you see someone you know being proud and and really uh, glorifying themselves instead of glorifying uh, the father and the spirit of god is not in them if they are glorifying themselves other than glorifying christ the finished work of christ and of the father who sent him praise god because the father sent christ praise god for the very purpose to destroy the works of the devil and that we may all who are sinners be sanctified and be sinless praise god he shed his blood for you know that we may be sinless and so this man sees these signs and wonders and that's where we started for no one can do these signs that you do unless god is with him so he recognized that these signs and and he knew that god was with christ the son the father was being glorified in christ jesus praise god and that's precisely what happens to the life of a believer when christ said these signs shall follow those that believe believe in christ jesus they shall cast out demons speak in new tongues and the, if they uh, take up serpents and drink poison uh, nothing shall harm them they shall lay hands on the sick that uh, the sick may be healed god our heavenly father and christ the son of living on the holy spirit working together with us praise the son of living god and uh, confirming his word with signs following those signs are not what we follow but the signs follow us praise the son living god and for the glory of the father in the son praise god who we accept as our personal lord and savior and so it says jesus answered and said to him most assuredly i say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and so what was christ talking about he was saying that if you want to do the same things that i do praise the son living god you must be born again praise god you must be born again it says, unless, most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In order for you to have eternal life, in order for God to use you in mighty ways, for you to see the signs happening, and then now as, as the signs that I'm doing right now, they are not um, uh, in and of themselves of this world. They are from heaven. They are, they are a part of the package that you receive as a child of God in the kingdom of God. God, as the Son of God, Christ here confirming that He is the Son of God, the Messiah, praise God. And in the same way, all of us that accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, those signs and wonders shall follow those that believe, as Christ said in Mark 16, 15 to 17. Praise the Son of the God. In verse 4, it says, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb or be born? Uh, and be born it says in verse 5 jesus answered most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of water in the spirit water in the spirit praise god so you have to have the spirit of god in you in order for these miraculous signs and wonders and for you to be born again most importantly praise god this miraculous signs and wonders following but for you to be born again you must be born of water and spirit praise god which christ as a son of god praise god 
was a son of God. Praise God, he already had the spirit. After baptism, he received the gift of the spirit. He received the spirit of God. I don't want to call it the gift because he was a son of God. Praise God. To us who are not believers, it is a gift. Praise the son of God on account of what Christ did on the cross, praise God. But he needed the spirit of God, so you understand, in order for him to walk the walk that he walked here on earth. And we need the spirit of God without without fail. That's why you have to be born again. We have to be born again in order for us to have that experience, praise God. And so go with me, if you will, to John chapter 16, uh, right there, around there, John chapter 16. And in John 7, 38, which we already um, mentioned, Christ uh, speaking to um, the disciples uh, said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And that is the spirit of the living God. Praise God. The spirit of living God who points to the finished work of Christ, points to the word of God. Praise God. And the truth in the word of God, not just the word of God, but the truth in the word of God. And the word of God is spirit and life. Christ said, My words are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is cannot return a void if it is backed by the spirit of god you're going to see results people being healed signs following people being supernaturally delivered uh, from uh, bondages all kinds of bondages from uh, depression from uh, sickness and disease and the church today needs to go back to that foundation praise god of adhering praise the son living god to the leadership of the holy spirit of god what god declares for those that are led by the holy spirit are the children of god and that he did not give us a spirit of bondage again to fear but a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out our father and so that is what makes us children of god in the kingdom of god when we accept christ as our personal lord and savior and receive the gift of the holy spirit and then we are led by the holy spirit and he helps us recognize in our spirit man or spirit person that we are children of god in fact he says in the spirit himself in romans 8 verse 15 praise god 16 uh, the spirit of himself the spirit himself witnesses is our witness witnesses to our spirits having been born again that we are children of god and the kingdom of god and if children hairs and joined hairs with christ if we suffer knowing that we will be glorified together with him when he returns praise god that is the scripture praise god and so it is important that we become born again so that we flow in that spirit praise god and the leadership of the holy spirit whether it is in worship for i say the time has come when those that worship our father in heaven to worship him in spirit and in truth you need the spirit of god you need the spirit of truth in order to worship in spirit and truth otherwise you're going to be worshiping who you don't know praise god praise the son of god you need the spirit of god in prayer romans 8 26 to 28 says that we know not what to pray for praise god and then our weaknesses it is the spirit of god who helps us to utter groans that we do not even understand he intercedes on our behalf he who searches heard so praise the son of god and knows the deep things of god praise the son of god is who helps intercede on behalf of all the saints praise god i don't know what is in my heart until the holy spirit pulls it out and before you know you just seeing things manifesting and saying what is this me but god working in and through you and the holy spirit approving things and sanctifying you purifying you so that when christ returns you are presented blameless in spirit a soul and a body praise god that's the purpose of the holy spirit to sanctify us to purify us to cleanse us and the blood of jesus christ pointing to the finished work of the precious blood of jesus christ yes he always points to the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you sin, you are convicted of sin, you know that you must repent. And when you repent, and you know that the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to wash your sins away. Praise God. And then you are back in the fold, in the sheepfold, under the shepherd, and that's Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. And so in um, uh, in uh, in John 7, verse 38, which you read, that's what it is. I wanted us to go to John 16 so that you understand that the Spirit of God points to the truth, praise God. And the purpose for which Christ sent him, our Father sent him on account of what Christ did on the cross, praise God. We cannot receive the Spirit without Christ, praise God. And so we must be born of in spirit. But first by accepting Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and that's how we get baptized, praise God, with the Spirit. When we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are assured of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, praise God. And so, and the Holy Spirit comes from the Father on account of 
the finished work of Christ Jesus and on account of us accepting that finished work of Christ on the cross and believing in his son praise this son of living God and so in John 16 verse 12 he says I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now praise God Christ had already said in John 14 somewhere that he would not leave the disciples as orphans but he would leave them a comforter a counselor that comforter that counselor is the spirit of the living god who comforts us when we are mourning who counsels us when we go wrong and counsels us in every walk of our lives when we do wrong when we god chastises us praise god and it is the spirit of god who connects us with father and lets us know that we are wrong in a certain area we need to correct things we need to repent we need to do this we need to worship we need to praise we need to grow we need to type provide fast pray it is the spirit of god and the spirit of god is a person is not an it is not a power as some uh denominations uh call him is a person and he can be grieved he can you you should not blaspheme him anybody that blasphemes the spirit of god shall not be forgiven you are not to blaspheme the spirit of god we are not to blaspheme the spirit of living god praise god he is grieved when we do wrong we are not to quench him he is grieved when we quen we quench him and the church today is quenching the spirit of god we do no longer believe some churches do not no longer believe in the miracle signs and wonders some don't believe in healing others they are stopping the work of god from from uh, you know being done essentially if you're saying there's no more healing no more uh, signs and wonders speaking in new in, new in tongues is something of the past when the scripture clearly says these signs shall follow those that believe then you're really quenching the spirit to quench the spirit is to really keep him in a box trying to stop him from doing what he needs to do for each and every one of us praise god and in ephesians 4 30 paul deals with that issue of quenching the spirit but let me first finish john 16 it says i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he so he's a person of the God, he, the spirit of truth, and he is the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth who points to Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Christ said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me, praise God. And so you understand that the spirit of truth points to the truth. Our Father is the Father of truth, praise God. Our Father, from whom we all come, from whom we are all named as born-again believers, is the father of truth praise god and it is the spirit of god who helps us witnesses our space and that we are children of god praise god and that god did not give us a spirit of bondage again to fear but a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out of the father and so it says i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he the spirit of truth has come so he's not just a power some power some strength power a he a he as a person the person of god praise god and we must not grieve him praise god will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority and that's how you identify that the spirit of god is speaking he does not speak on his own authority you know you can't say oh i am the authority and jesus christ is put aside okay there are many other ways that is not the spirit of god you can tell right right away because he's not speaking uh, um, um, under the authority of Christ Jesus, the Son of the Living God, under the authority of our Father in heaven, praise God. But He's speaking on His own authority. So in ours is is shedding away the authority of Christ, which we know Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, praise God. And in fact, he says here that he will not for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come praise the son of the living god the spirit of prophecy the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and so the spirit of truth testifies praise god of that which is to come the spirit of uh, um uh, the, the the spirit of god testifies of that which is to come testifies of the finished work of christ the son of the living god praise god testifies of the blood of jesus christ on the cross the spirit of god testifies of the healing that comes through the blood which testifies of everything that God has purposed for you and I. Praise the Son of the Living God, that we may all be saved. Praise the Son of the Living God, that we may all have 
purity we may be all be healed that we may all be whole in spirit soul and body praise god three john one two what god declares john saying that he wished above all things above all things that we prospered praise god all of us and he was talking to the church at the time but that word is very much alive for us today praise god in the spirit he wished above all things that we prospered that we were in good health even as our souls prospered so it is a totality god does not desire any of his children to be in sickness and disease he does not desire any of his children to be poor he does not desire any of his children to be in sin and unrighteousness he desires that all come to full repentance praise god praise god he does not desire that any perish but that all come to full repentance according to second peter 3 9. he came to call sinners to repentance praise god when we repent of our sins we go back to the father's to the father's uh, house praise God and we partake of those blessings of those inheritances that he has purpose for his children who are truly repentant who do not want anything to do with sin and unrighteousness we're going to go into that um, um, uh, in a moment praise God and so you understand then that the Spirit of God will not uh, glorify himself he will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he will testify of things to come and that's what happened through john the revelator the spirit of god testified of things to come praise god this john the revelator saw these things in the spirit praise god paul formerly soul of justice had a revelation of christ in the spirit praise god praise the Solomon and the, the deep things of god that he continued to learn were in the spirit praise god he saw christ yes and christ is the son of god but christ left the holy spirit for the very purpose of revealing the things that paul revealed in the letters praise god praise the Solomon god in the spirit the same thing in the book of revelation in all the scriptures praise god long after christ had gone he fulfilled his promise that i'm not going to leave you as orphans i'll leave you a comforter i'll leave you a counselor in acts 1 8 he says you shall receive power from on high power from on high the anointing of the holy spirit praise god now that is power the word power is dunamis it means the the the, the power to be able to do what you need to do and that power is in the spirit it's a person of the holy spirit and there's power and that power comes from the holy spirit praise god praise something so a lot of people confuse the jehovah's witnesses they confuse the holy spirit for a power Yes, the power comes from the Holy Spirit, but the person of the Holy Spirit is who, is who provides that power in order for us to be able to preach. I'm preaching because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working in and through me, praise God. It's who gives me that power. Praise God. It's not my power, praise God. It is the power from on high. And Christ promised in Acts 1.8, uh, you shall receive power from on high. You shall preach in Jerusalem and the message of God in Jerusalem, the gospel, praise God, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. And today we have the scriptures, praise God, the, the word of God that we have today, the written word of God, praise this son of living God, is as a result of these men who were obedient the disciples that were remaining 11 of them and then they later added one after judas iscariot um, uh, was disobedient they sold christ for 30 pieces of silver but the 11 and the one that was added on they went to that upper room obedient to christ and they received the power that is the day of pentecost when the power came upon them as in the tongues of fire they spoke in new tongues Fulfilling the promise that Christ made in Mark 16, 15 to 17, that he, these signs shall follow those that believe. Uh, believing requires obedience. You cannot say, I believe, when you're not obedient. When you're disobedient and rebellious in your heart, you're not really a believer. And so they were obedient and they received that power. And today, that power continues to be powered out upon those that believe upon those churches that believe in the power and anointing of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit healing miracles signs and wonders and obediently believe and follow the kingdom principles tithing giving praying fasting praising and worshiping in spirit and truth praying in the spirit always god is doing miracles mighty things praise god and so this is what christ talked of and he say in verse 14 he will glorify me the spirit of god glorifies it Christ, the Son of the living God, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So he takes of that which is the finished work of Christ on the cross and declares it to the world. Praise the Son of the living God to the believers and even non-believers so that they may come 
to salvation. Praise God. It is the goodness of the Lord that leads a man unto repentance. Praise the Son of God. We've all seen and fallen short of the glory of God, but it is the Spirit of God ultimately who draws man unto Christ. Praise God. And God using vessels like me and other men and women of God, praise God, to bring others to Christ. And He wants to use you. Praise God. If you are obedient and not rebellious, praise God, and open up your heart. He's going to use you in mighty ways as a pastor, apostle, whatever it is that is your calling, evangelist, teacher, praise God, prophet of God, a worship leader, in any calling, God will use you. Worship, it leads to breaking bondages. And worship leader who is Holy Spirit led, when they worship and lead others into worship, oh my God, you're going to see demons flying, people being delivered from sickness and disease. Praise God. And we're going to worship in a moment. Praise God. Praise the Son of Man. These are the things that Christ said. He will glorify me, for he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Praise God. He said, therefore, I see that he will take up mine and declare it to you. Praise God. Just as the Son of the living God, Christ, glorified the Father. Praise God. When he was here on earth, he said, I do not do anything that my Father does not do. I do not say anything that my Father that it has not told me to say praise god what i say or what i declare to you is what my father has declared to me to say praise god he came to destroy the works of the enemy praise god and so does the holy spirit he points to the finished work of christ the son of living god and the father who sent him the three agree as one there are three witnesses in heaven the father the son and the holy spirit that agree as one according to first john chapter 5 verse 6 i believe praise god and three on earth praise god which christ said i'm not going to leave you as orphans i'll leave you a counsel a, a counsel like comfort and that is the holy spirit the three that agree as one here on earth that remain to witness to the finished work of christ that is the spirit the water and you understand that yes christ is still here praise god in spirit so the spirit points to the word of god praise god that was there in the beginning was with god was god and that is christ the son of the living god and the blood of christ the blood which is what cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness and we overcome by the blood of the lamb by the word of our testimony not loving our lives even unto death praise god thank you jesus and so these words are true. Praise the Son of the living God. And that is how we, are, we can live as born again believers and overcome the temptations. And this morning, this morning we studied temptations uh, and uh, the scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 to 13. Please open your Bibles in 1 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. Uh, for those of you who are not with us, please listen to that recording. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, praise the Son of the living God, verse 12, Christ using Paul, a formerly Saul of Tarsus, a man who was transformed from persecuting the church, now being Holy Spirit filled and speaking the things of the Spirit and speaking things of uh, the deep things of God, praise the Son of the living God, warning of the disobedience of uh, the Israelites not to come I mean, for people in this time, not to follow the disobedience and rebelliousness of the children of Israel in the past, praise God, they committed sexual immorality. If you look at the beginning of First Corinthians 10, verse 1, all the way up to 12. I'm going to start from there for, uh, for purposes of uh, those who do not have this background. It says, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. And he's talking about their fathers during the time of the old covenant, praise God when they were with moses and god made a way where there seemed to be no way praise god and today under the new covenant christ is that way god made a way where there seemed to be no way all of us would have perished but thank god christ the son of living god died on the cross he is the way the truth and life and how makes it possible for us to be reconciled to the father i say that with a smile because that is the message praise god that he made a way where there seemed to be no way all of us would have been, would have perished, but God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him may not perish but have everlasting life. Just as He led the children of Israel through the Red Sea with Moses, the lead under Christ, who is the head of the church, the bridegroom to the bride, Christ made a way for us. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son that we may have a way. Praise God shed his precious blood on the cross for you and I, that now when we believe him as our personal Lord and Savior, that blood washes our sins away and we have eternal life in heaven, praise God. 
eternal life in heaven. Praise the Son of God. He says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, the Red Sea, all were baptized. And so the Red Sea at the time was a physical Red Sea. In the realm of the Spirit, the blood of Jesus Christ is our Red Sea, praise God. And everybody that is washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ accepts Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, repents and is washed in the precious blood of uh, the Son of the living God. Yes, accepts to be in, in the kingdom of God through Christ the Son of the living God. And it is that precious blood that makes a way where there seems to be no way. The blood was shed on the cross. Christ, the Son of the living God, is the way, the truth, and life. And nobody comes to the Father except through Him. Praise God. I think you get the message. And verse 2 says, All we are baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all at the same spiritual food. Praise God. Now, He's likening what the children, the same God of the same yesterday to them. Christ is the same yesterday to them forever. Who got the children of Israel through the Red Sea is the same God who sent Christ. Oh, Shakaya. Christ, the Son of the Living God, praise God, was there in the beginning, was with God, was God, and He was with the children of Israel at the time, praise God. So, Christ, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, was with the children of Israel, praise God. It was with the children of Israel and got them through that Red Sea. It says, All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food. What spiritual food are we talking about? Listen to this. The spiritual food is talking about in verse 4 it says, and all drank the same spiritual drink. What is the spiritual drink? Think about it for a minute, praise God. In Deuteronomy 8 3, the word of God declares that God fed the children of Israel, men are from heaven, praise God, that they may know that a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. If God said he's going to provide for you, now the spiritual food is not the manna. But it is the word of God. He said it and he performed it, praise God. He decreed it and it came to pass, praise God. If God says the word, it will come to pass. If he says, I will provide for you, I will provide for you, praise God. He will provide all our needs according to his riches and glory. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all we can ever expect to imagine according to power that works in us. Praise the son of the living God. And so the spirit of food here is not the manna, but it is the word of God. In Deuteronomy 8.3, praise God. If you go with me to Deuteronomy 8.3, because a lot of people confuse that. So the spirit of food was the word of God that said, I will provide for you, even though they complained from time and time again, they complained. But God has still provided for them, praise God. He provided for them to show his glory, to show them that I am your God and I will provide for you. You don't know, need to complain. Praise God. Praise the Son of the Lord. So go with me to Deuteronomy 8 3. Praise God. And Christ said the same, same, quoted the same scripture when he was tempted by Satan to turn stones into bread. He said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, our mouth of the Lord. Praise God. And Deuteronomy 8 3. So you understand it is not about the physical food, it is about the spiritual food. And Christ is the bread of life. He promised in John 6 35 that I am the bread of life. Whoever receives me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And so you understand that the bread of life there is the word of God. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, it says, Praise the Son of the Living God. I'm hoping you're being blessed uh, with this revelation. It says, um, So he humbled you. The word of God declares, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So what were they feeding on? And what is the spirit of food? The spirit of food is, yes, the food that they ate from heaven was physical in the cross from heaven but the spiritual food really was the word of god the word of god once he says that i'm going to provide for you he's going to provide for you praise god that's precisely that and so here going back to first Corinthians 10 verse 3 says all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink and what is the spiritual drink praise god for they drank of that spiritual rock Praise God. Now, in the rock, during the time, remember the children of Israel complained a lot and they 
cry, they came to this place where which they called Mara, or bitterness, where they 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 did not have um, uh, they did not have. Uh, 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 clean water to drink and they complained to Moses uh, we were in Egypt and we were able to eat pots of meat and we are able to drink and uh, uh, do all these things now you brought us through these waters they quickly forgot that it's God who got them through that bondage of slavery under Pharaoh for 400 years and a lot of people complain when they go through situations forgetting that it's God who can get you through those situations Praise God, we had a, a teaching on that uh, for those of you who are not with us please uh, uh, I don't know what teaching that is, but it is on the web, uh, on the on the Facebook page, praise God. And so their complaining made them to quickly forget that God is a provider, praise God. But even then, even then, the scripture says, the scripture says, and all drank the same spiritual ring, for they drank of that spiritual rock that time when they complained. God commanded Moses in one of the instances to hit the rock and from the rock came water praise God and they drank and their thirst was quenched now is it a physical rock that he's talking about or is he talking about the word of God that made it possible for Moses to hit the rock and they were able to drink praise God so so you have to understand that he we're talking about the word of God the spiritual drink and the spiritual food here is not the physical food about the word of God confirming praise God with miracle signs and wonders following when he says I'll provide for you I'll provide for you food I'll provide for you a drink I'll provide for you everything it is God and he's capable of doing anything and so here Paul formerly sold of Tarsus, revealing in the spirit that the God that provided a drink through Moses to the children of Israel when he hit that rock or when he spoke to that rock two times one of them he was disobedient and we, we talk about that praise God he did not follow the instructions clearly but nevertheless God provided water for the children of Israel provided food for 40 years in the wilderness not because that oh it is the food that was the spirit but that god wanted to show them that i am your god and i can provide all your needs according to your riches and due to my riches and glory i can i'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we can have, all you can ever expect or imagine from the power of us speaking to the children of israel praise god even today speaking to us praise god that same christ who was there is the same today and forever he is was and is to come Praise the Son of the living God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is, was, and is to come. Praise God. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. All we have to do is have faith in him. Praise God. And he will provide for us. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And everything else shall be added unto you, the word of God declares. And so when we see in the scripture, it says, And all drank the same spiritual ring, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. He's not talking about the physical rock from which the water came, but rather the spiritual rock that commanded that rock to bring forth water. And today under Christ, Christ is the rock of our salvation. Praise the Son of living God who provides us that spiritual water and the spiritual water is the spirit of the living God. When Christ said in John 7 verse 38, whoever believes in me, we just read it, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He meant precisely that, that if we believe in him, out of our innermost being shall flow the things of the spirit and the spirit of God working in and through us. Praise God. Through his word, through everything, dreams, visions, through blessing, praise God, will be a blessing to others, praise God, in the spirit, in prayer, in worship, everything, praise God. God bless you abundantly. And so that is what happens. In verse 5, he says, but with most of them, and this is what we commented on earlier, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples. They became our examples. Even today, they are our examples, praise God, that we should not be as disobedient as they were, because many, many fell from the grace of God, 23,000 almost swallowed by the ground because of their disobedience some were beaten by serpents because they were disobedient to the extent that god commanded moses to put a snake on a staff and that whoever would see that a snake on the staff would be healed 
God pardoned them. And Pat Christ makes reference to that serpent, the bronze serpent, on the staff. He says that just as Moses was commanded by God and he, he rose, he, he lifted up that staff with the serpent, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And he was talking about the cross. Today we are still talking about the cross. Praise the Son of God. And the finished work of Christ on the cross. He nailed every curse, every curse of sin and unrighteousness, every curse of poverty, dead and life, every curse of sickness and disease, every curse that you can ever think of that came as a result of the original sin of Adam and Eve. He nailed it on the cross. Praise God. And that was a reference to the serpent. But going back to our scripture, they were disobedient to the extent that they were beaten by serpents and he makes reference to this that we should not do those things this should be an example for us not to be disobedient and rebellious but to be obedient to christ praise god and if there's any thought in this new covenant there what a good declares in second corinthians 10 4 to 5 for the weapons we fight with are not kind of in nature but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive and obedient to Christ. And when all, yes, when all obedience has been fulfilled, punishing every disobedience, punishing every disobedience when all obedience has been fulfilled. And so we must submit our hearts to God and be obedient, praise God. Today, if you hearken the voice of God, please don't be disobedient. Accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. Praise God. So it says, now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. They lusted after meat. They lusted after bread. And God provided manna from heaven. They lusted after uh, meat. Actually, he provided quails. <laughs> Quails from heaven, chicken falling down from heaven, praise God. That's God. That's the God that we serve, praise God. But we must not complain. Don't complain to God, praise God. Just praise Him, glorify Him for what you have, and you'll get more, praise God. Seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. Everything else shall be added unto you, praise God. And so He says that we should not last after evil things as they also lusted. We should not last after the silver and gold of this world, the cars, the houses, and everything which people prostitute themselves for. They lie, them, they lie to others for, they kill for. Let us not seek the treasures of this world. We are more than rash deeds and we are thieves breaking and steal, but the treasures from heaven where more than rash does not eat and where thieves do not break in and steal. And that is through Christ, the Son of living God. Praise God, who asks us to seek God that has been tested by fire from him that we may be rich. White garments that our nakedness and shame or the shame of our nakedness may be covered. I saw that we may see things in the realm of the spirit, even as he sees them. Praise God. And listen to this. It says, in verse 7, and do not become idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Just right after, just as God was giving the Ten Commandments to Moses, down here, Aaron, who later became the priest, <laughs> God chose him a priest, but he was showing the, the sinfulness of man. He, following the, 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 the calling of uh, um, of, of, of all the Israelites that were rebellious to make a golden calf, he made a golden calf and they worshiped the calf. Can you imagine? That goes to tell you that we who are under grace, we ought to glorify and honor God because it is by grace through faith that Christ sent his only begotten son. Praise God. And we receive that grace through faith, by grace through faith, not by any man's works of righteousness, lest any flesh boast, but by grace through faith. Praise God. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, the whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God. And so listen, he said, the people sit down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Today we have a lot of idolatry, a lot of worship of all manner of false gods, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, a Christianity that is based on religiosity and mixed with idolatry. And we must pray, praise God. We must pray that God protects us against that, praise God. In verse 8, it says, No, let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell that I mentioned, praise God. 
And in verse 10, it says, no complaint, as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Complaining. Verse 11 says, now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Now you understand that these things were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come we are in the ends of the age we are in the last days and in his last days these are some of the warnings why well, say just as it was in the days of newer in matthew 24 and in somewhere in look uh, um, look it mentions it again just as it was in the days of newer and as it was in the days of lot in the days of sodom and gomorrah so shall it be when he returns when the son of man returns and you understand that we are seeing so many things we are seeing homosexuality pedophilia and incest and adultery fornication and a lot of things that are happening sorcery witchcraft sorcery occultism and things like that we must repent we must come back to christ we must come up to our heavenly father and it is through christ the son of the living god who made it possible for us to be reconciled to the father on the cross when he said it is finished it was for you and i praise god and these things uh, it stresses were written for our admonition that we may not be disobedient like they were praise god but be obedient and submit to god praise god and verse 12 says therefore let him who thinks he stands if you think you stand if you think you standing let him who thinks him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall I said in Matthew 24, I believe verse 12, that in the last days, uh, uh, days uh, towards his return, uh, the love of many will turn cold. And in fact, somewhere he says that if it is possible, Matthew 24, 24, I believe, even the elect will be deceived by false apostles, false teachers who are lying about so many things, claiming that, oh, there are many ways to our Father in heaven other than Christ. Friends, Christ is the only way, the truth, and life. There is no other. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father except for me. Praise God. John 14, verse 6. Praise God. And so he warns us. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. In verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you. No temptation, we talk about temptation in the morning, has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Praise God. But God is faithful. Our God is faithful, praise God, who will not allow you to be tempted. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able, beyond what you're able. But with the temptation, we'll also make the way of escape. Paul here is making a case for the way. What is the way of escape? Just as he made a way for the children of Israel who passed through the cloud under Moses and through the Red Sea. Today, under Christ, who is the way, the truth, and life, who reconciles us to the Father, praise God, Christ is the way. And when we repent of our sins and ask for the forgiveness of our sins, that blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, is sufficient to wash our sins away, and we are reconciled to the Father. And so God is faithful. He's so faithful and true that he so loved us. He sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life, praise God. And so he says, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. And yes, we talk about endurance this morning. In James, I believe, chapter 1, verse 12, it says that he who endures through the temptation will ultimately be approved by God and he will wear the crown of life. Praise God. That is what makes you a believer. If you endure the temptation, stand firm on the word of God and believe that God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way, no matter what kind of temptation from the tempter, that is the devil, that he throws at us, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient. When you fall to that temptation, just know that, yes, there's still a way that you are not finished, praise God. Christ died on the cross to call sinners to repentance, that when you repent of that sin and ask for the forgiveness of your sin, the blood of Jesus Christ, when we are willing to come to the marvelous life, which is our Father, the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, is sufficient to wash our sins away, praise God. That is the way, praise God. That is the way, praise God. I just wanted to... Uh, uh, to uh, recap on that, uh, specific, specifically, since we talked about temptation in the morning, but we're gonna go and ahead and worship, praise God, and this worship uh, for a few minutes before we go into the word. 
it's called ultimate call i need you um, the album ultimate call i need you featuring aaron moses i believe uh you will love it and uh, let us worship together god bless you supernatural even as I speak right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of death is being bound even as I speak in the name of Jesus. And about the spirit of death is being bound right now. Even the physical death, untimely death is being bound right now in the name of Jesus. 
Someone that has a headache. I pray that you are healed in the name of Jesus. I pray that you are totally restored in the name of in your mind. And be a mind of Christ. I find the word of God in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, 18, and 2, 5 in the name of Jesus. Hey, come on. The spirit of religion is being bound right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of idolatry is being bound right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I need touch. Some of you have allergies, asthma. Be healed in the name of Jesus. For many kind of allergies. Asthma, high blood pressure, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody that has a tightness in the chest, be healed supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Anybody that has asthma, be healed supernaturally in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God declares that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in your midst. And I do believe that God is with us, praise God. And where two agree on anything, it shall be done. Praise the Son of God by my Father in heaven, Christ said. And so we believe that whatever we, our prayers are, they've been answered. Whatever is in our hearts and it is in the will of God, that God wants to change, praise God. We prayed about it. God is going to do it, praise God. Whatever we prayed for, it has to be in the will of God. It will be done. The God's will, just understand, is that nobody be sick, nobody be poor, nobody be uh, in sin and unrighteousness, but that all come to full repentance. He does not desire that any perish, but that we all come to full repentance. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And continuing with our study of the cross and the cross of Christ Jesus on the cross, he made a public spectacle of all principalities and powers and triumphed. In, over them in it in the cross in the finished work on the cross in the nailing of all sin and unrighteousness poverty dead and luck and everything christ said it is finished he said it is finished meaning that it is paid in full he paid the price for the penalty that you and i would have otherwise have had with his precious blood the, as of a, a, the blood of the precious lamb of god the lamb of god without spot or wrinkle was shed for you and i that we may have freedom, that we may have liberty. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Now the Lord is a spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. Christ speaking in Mark 8, verse 34. Praise God. Through uh, Mark, a great a writer. Praise God. Led by the Holy Spirit. In verse 34 says, uh, When he had called the, the, the people, the people to himself, praise God, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, if you want to be a believer, if you want to follow Christ, if you want to be a believer, a true believer, whoever desires to come up to me, let him deny himself. You must deny yourself. What did he mean? He says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So, pardon or crucial part of the foundation of the believers and the foundation that the cornerstone that the builders the stone that became the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected praise god christ is something god is upon whom we build our foundation praise god praise the sun living on and so in order for you to be a believer a true believer if you want to come up to christ he says let him deny himself. He says, you must deny yourself. 
and take up his cross. You must take up your cross. You and I have our own crosses to carry here on earth. And those crosses require that we deny ourselves, praise God. Denying what? Denying all the sin and unrighteousness in the world. Denying anything to do with the devil. And that is why we confess and we confess unto salvation and we believe in our hearts and we believe unto the righteousness that comes from Christ the living God. What that means is that anything that is unrighteous, anything that is sin, anything that is evil, you detest now. You become dead to sin. We're going to read the scripture in a moment. And you become alive in Christ. Praise God. That's what it means to deny oneself and carry your cross. Praise God. What is your cross? Your cross is really Christ's burden, which is light. Christ's yoke, which is easy. Praise God. Christ said, if anybody... Come to me if you are heavy laden. If anybody is heavy laden, come to me only who are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest, praise God. Because my heart is lowly. My heart is gentle. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. So taking up one's cross doesn't mean that, oh, you're going to be crucified all over. Like Christ was crucified. It doesn't mean that, oh, you're going to... to, to uh, uh, to, to, to pay the penalty for your sin, but rather for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of Christ's kingdom. Yes, if it means losing your life, you will lose it. But really denying oneself right from the beginning when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is to become dead to sin, just as Christ crucified sin and unrighteousness on the cross. And then you become alive in Christ, just as Christ overcame death and rose from the dead, praise God, on the third day. The same spirit that you have that rose from the dead, now you have to live under the leadership of that spirit, praise God. And that's why we as born again believers, the word of God declares, Paul says it very clearly in Romans 8, 14, for those that are led by the spirit of the living God are the children of God, meaning that if the spirit says this is wrong, it is wrong. You don't do it. If the spirit says this is not yours, even if you think you're, you're doing something that is right and yet God tells you that this is not where you need to be. You need to be at point A, point B, point C. At a certain time, you must follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That is denying oneself, praise God. So it goes from uh, becoming dead to sin, meaning that you crucify the flesh, you crucify any sinfulness, any unrighteousness, any, anything to do with evil, and to the point of being, being ready to, be, to, to die for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ, praise God. In Revelation 12, uh, 10 to 11, in fact, let's go there very briefly, uh, is how we overcome the accuser of the brethren, praise God. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives even unto death, praise God. In other words, that you must not put your life, even you must not worship your life when it comes to Christ. The great men and women of God that came before us, the Peters, the Pauls, the Stephens, they were crucified. They were stoned to death for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom. They did not fear because they knew that they were going to a better place. They were going to wear a crown of life, a crown of glory. And the temptation to save one's life in the face of persecution, it is very strong, especially in these last days where there's a lot of persecution of believers, a lot of persecution in people's finances, a lot of persecution, even through sickness and disease, you can be tempted to give up and go to witchcraft or occultism and I worship little gods. Even people have sacrificed their children, their own children for riches. Those are the temptations. They prostitute themselves for the riches of this world. Revelation 12 verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And verse 11 says, And they overcame him. How do we overcome here in the world? This God. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to their death, the scripture says. In other words, that you must not love your life so much as to save it in order for you to, in other words, denying Christ so that you want to save your life. Here it says, on the contrary, for the sake of the kingdom, 
How do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. You must testify of the finished work of Christ without compromising the gospel, even if it means death. You must testify of the finished work of Christ on the cross and that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other, praise God, as he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me without compromising the truth. Testify. Even if it means losing your life, praise God. Not loving their lives to the death, praise God. That is carrying one's cross to the point of death, praise God. For the sake of the gospel, praise God. Why well, say, just as I was persecuted, just as I was persecuted, so shall you. And so persecution is part of the calling for the believer. It's part of carrying one's cross, praise God. And persecution comes in many ways. It comes to, we say, to the point of death, through sickness and disease, through all kinds of things. Now, are those things good? They're not good. The persecution for the sake of the kingdom of God, yes, that is good because you know you're going to go to a better place. Persecution comes as a result of Satan, Satan using people to persecute men and women of God. Praise God, but you must not compromise your faith in God because persecution has come. That is precisely the message. Praise God. That yes, even if it is sickness and disease, the devil has thrown things at you. You must stand firm in faith and say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I'm standing firm on the word of God. Christ who said, Praise the Son of the Living God. Through his son in Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Standing firm in faith on the word brings healing, praise God. Now, the persecution of sickness and diseases from the devil, because his whole evil plan is to derail you from faith, that all you may look at alternatives. Other people go through witch to witchcraft, to witch doctors, and all kinds of things, worship little gods because they think they're going to get healing. Others drown themselves in uh, drunkenness uh, to think that they're going to get rid of their depression. God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, sent His Son to bring healing in every area of our lives. And it's only through Christ that you can get rid of those things if you stand from in faith, despite the persecution from the enemy, the accusations, the temptations. Only Christ, the Son of living God, can get you through. Praise God in the mighty name of Jesus. And so going back to scripture in Mark 8, verse 34, and this is very profound. Denying oneself and taking up one's cross to follow Christ, he says. Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever, 35, he says, desires to save his life will lose it. If you desire to save your life, and this could take very many forms, you're facing persecution and then uh, because you're facing persecution, you deny Christ, you want to save your life, he says you lose it. You prostitute yourself for the sake of money. You worship mammon and not God. The pleasures of this world, the sin and unrighteousness of this world, and you enjoy the sin and unrighteousness to walk in darkness rather than in the light. That is what he's talking about. For whoever desires to save his life, so you want to save your life. You want to live this life and of, uh, of lavishness, of uh, promiscuity, of uh, pornography, of uh, uh, adultery and fornication, of, of uh, 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 homosexuality, of uh, witchcraft and sorcery. If you want to desire, if your desire is for those things, and that is your life, it goes deeper, praise God. You love the life in this world and not deny yourself, crucify the flesh, if then you are going to lose it in the life that is to come. In other words, you don't have eternal life. The word of God declares in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. You must deny yourself the pleasures of this world. You must deny anything to do with evil. And by pleasures, I mean uh, evil pleasures, evil desires. I'm not saying that, oh, you go starve yourself to death. You do not eat. You do not do anything. God wants us to have fun, but not fun as the world has fun. Praise God through birds and, and going to street clubs and things like that. He wants you to enjoy life. But enjoy it in a kingdom way. Praise God. He wants us to have 
life. He wants us to not only have eternal life, which is the greatest uh, treasure, praise God, the crown of life. That's what we're all working for, praise God. But even in this life, he wants us to be blessed abundantly, to be blessed with abundance, with finances. He wishes above all things, as John says, praise God, in 3 John 1, 2, that our souls prosper, that we prosper in all things, are in good health, even as our souls prosper, praise God. And Paul prayed in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and that the God of peace sanctifies us wholly, that we may be presented blameless in spirit, soul, and body. Blamelessness in spirit, soul, and body means that you are born again in your spirit, which Christ said you must be born of word and spirit, and in your soul, your soul is feeding on the food of the spirit, praise God, the word of God, and you do not have lies, you do not have any of the evil and the unforgiveness and the gossip and anything that's not of God. But you have a pure heart, Christ said, blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. And in your body, there's no sickness and disease. You are blameless when Christ returns, praise God. And a lot of people think, oh, sickness is something that God ordained and somebody died of a cancer. No, that is evil. It's from the devil. The devil, the same devil, the same old tricks he used on a job that man of God who suffered to the extent of even having sores in his body, lost everything, his finances. It was the devil at work. It was not God who was doing that. But because that man stood firm and sought the righteousness that comes from God, his latter days were better than his former days. He recognized that his Redeemer was God. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives. Praise God. And once we recognize that, that God is our salvation, that Christ is a rock of our salvation. He's our Lord and Savior, our light and our salvation. The author and the finish of our faith. And lay aside every weight and sin that so easily stands us. We're going to have better latter days. The latter days are going to be better than to be better than the former days. We're going to be moving from glory to glory, from strength to strength, as veils are being removed from our eyes. And as we behold the glory of God, wanting to be more like in the, in the image of God, praise God, we are created in the image of God, praise God, as we behold the glory of the Lord, we ourselves are going to be transformed continuously from glory to glory, from strength to strength, as by the Spirit of God, praise God. No matter what the devil throws at you, just stand firm in faith, praise God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That is denying oneself and taking up your cross, not flagging yourselves. I see people always around this time in the Easter season, people in Spain, I understand, I've seen it briefly on, on, on YouTube videos. I understand some people, they take it farther to the extent that they, they start beating themselves up just like Christ was beaten up. And they are called flagellants. <laughs> and I wondered, why would you? That's not what carrying your cross is. They carry their, 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 these crosses, they call them their crosses. I think they misinterpreted, literally, take carrying their crosses uh, uh, to be literal. And then so and so they carry their crosses half naked as Jesus was uh, was uh, stripped naked and with uh, you know with pants covering the, uh, the, the lower part and then they beat themselves up after carrying the crosses they beat themselves up with these sweeps and they're bloody and bloody and that is not what Christ is talking about but that is how perverted uh, the enemy has made the, the gospel their religiosity. And so these people beat themselves, they are called flagellants, flagging themselves and beating themselves up. And then they, they are crucified. Some of them go ahead to be crucified on the cross and they, they are nailed on the cross like Christ was nailed on the cross. It is not what Christ is talking about. That is not what Christ is talking about. He's talking about denying oneself, denying oneself, not selling your soul to gain the world. In fact, he says it in verse 35, for whoever desires to save his life, we we'll lose it, but whoever loses his life, uh, loses his life. In, in other words, you lose your life in, in this everyday life. Don't allow anything that is not of God to take your mind, to take your soul. Praise God. And be focused on the author and the finish of our faith. That is Christ Jesus. Laying aside every weight and sin that's so easy in saying as praise God. And he says, loses his life for my sake and gospel will save it. So if you lose your life for the sake of the gospel and for his sake, then you will save it. Praise God. Now, that includes, even to the point of death, if you are going to come at you and say, yeah, we're going to persecute you for telling the truth, be ready to die. Be ready to die. And it is tough. It is tough. 
but yet that is the call for the believer praise god you must not love your life even unto death and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony not loving their lives even unto death praise god that takes the spirit of god the courage of the spirit of god i have to tell you you have to be born again it's not religious it is not religion that is going to get you through that it takes the holy boldness of the spirit of god we need the spirit of god to give us that holy boldness so that when tribulation comes when persecution comes we are going to stand firm and do not waver to the left or to the right and that is my prayer praise god for each and every one of us praise god and christ was precisely talking about this in verse 36 he says for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul and what will it profit man to gain the whole world if they lose their own soul so you understand that it is about your hurt the condition of your heart are you ready to prostitute yourself are you ready to to uh, to um do anything that is anti-god in order for you to gain the whole world but lose your soul or are you ready to uncompromisingly say no to anything that is evil even to the point of death and they tell you uh, say no you don't know you're not a believer say no to jesus are you ready to die when they tell you that that is the call it says for word will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul so if you're ready to give in exchange for your soul uh, for, 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 to receive money in exchange for your soul for example it's going to give an example if you're ready to sell your soul just so you can get money if you're ready to lie just so you can make your money if you're ready to prostitute yourself just so you can get money if you're ready to commit idolatry just so you can get money which of sorcery just so you can get money if you're ready to lie even as a, a believer not tell the truth about things like homosexuality that it is a sin just to get money all these things are what christ was talking about in verse 37 says or oh, what will a man give in exchange for his soul for whoever listen to this for whoever is ashamed of me and my words so if you're ashamed of christ and his words and you're not ready to tell the truth uncompromisingly he's saying for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father and with the holy angels and christ friends christ is coming back soon for a holy and british church and we must we must stand firm on his word without wavering to the left or to the right and compromisingly telling the truth that his people may be saved he does not desire that any perish but that we all come to full repentance praise god he came to call sinners to repentance praise god and he is pure and holy and he desires that we are pure and holy praise god and let us teach and preach the gospel based on that foundation and that truth and not be ashamed of christ in the presence of this adulterous and sinful generation but pray and preach the gospel and that people may come to salvation praise god into the knowledge of the truth and that the eyes of our understanding may be opened to that truth and to walk in that truth to not just be hearers of the word but to be doers of the word praise god and that takes the courage which only comes from the holy spirit of god praise god the boldness to speak the truth which christ said in acts 1 8 you shall receive power from on high praise god that you may be able to preach in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the ends of the earth which came on the day of pentecost is what we need the power of the spirit of living god to stand firm in these last days that we are living in praise god to call those things that are not as of the year to stand firm in faith and cast out demons and be able to to to, to do that which god has purpose for us to do which he said this the works that i do you'll be able to do even more if you believe that the father may be may be glorified in the son praise god in the name of jesus and so if you are ashamed of the words of christ of christ himself and his words 
in his adulterous and sinful generation says of him the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with all the angels and friends that is the truth go with me to romans 6 10 to 14 to, so that we understand uh, the cross uh, the finished work of the cross requires sacrifice paul said in romans 12 1 to 2 that i beseech you therefore by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to the lord praise god not to be conformed to this world he says and uh, this clearly speaks to what Christ was saying, not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know that which is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That is the work of a believer, praise God. It is a daily sacrifice, an everyday sacrifice, praise God. And it is tough, but by the grace of God, it is by grace, and Paul, you know, he says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, it's by the mercies of God that we are able to do all these things, praise God, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the leadership of the Holy Spirit that we're able to do whatever it is that we need to do in this life that he has put us in, praise God, and each and every one of our callings, praise God. And so go with me to um, uh, Romans 6, Romans 6, I'm going to start from verse 10, praise God, and Romans 6 verse 10. Uh, he says, for the death that he died, the death that Christ died, when he died on the cross, praise God, he died to sin. What does it mean? He crucified sin, praise God. He nailed every sin and unrighteousness and made a public spectacle of all principalities and powers and triumphed over them in that nailing on the cross of all sin and unrighteousness. When he said it is finished, it was finished. The work that he had come to do to pay for your sins and my sins was finished. When he shed that blood on the cross, praise God. And so because he became dead to sin, he expects us also as believers, as we carry our crosses, to become dead to sin and alive in Christ, continuously growing from glory to glory, from strength to strength, into the image of Christ, the image of God, praise God. When we see Christ, the Christ that we saw here was in the image of the Father, praise God. And God wants us to grow in that image because that is a representation of the image of God in heaven, praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. It says in verse 10, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, the life that he lives, and he lives, praise the Son of the living God. And it's Paul, long after Christ had died and rose from the dead, is talking about a, a risen Christ, a Christ who is living, praise God, not a dead Christ, not a historical Christ, but a living Christ. He who was once dead, but now lives forever and ever, as it is written in Revelation 1 verse 18, praise God, he said, I'm he who was once dead, but now lives forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and Hades, praise God. And everybody that believes overcomes death and Hades. But everybody that chooses sin and unrighteousness, the wages of sin is death, unfortunately. And that death is a spiritual death in hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ, the Son of the living God. Understand, friends, that the thief, that old serpent called the devil, the dragon, came but to steal, kill, and destroy. But thank God, Christ came to give us life, and he came to give it to us more abundantly. And if we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are assured of eternal life in heaven. Praise God. We overcome death and Hades, even as Christ overcame death and Hades. Praise God. And he holds the keys of death and Hades. The enemy has no power over you when you accept Christ as your personal Lord. Repent of your sins. And accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And the enemy will always fight that message, but clearly that is what it's about. Praise God. That is what it's about. And it says in verse 11, likewise, so in other words, just as Christ became dead to sin, and now the life that he lives, he lives to God. Praise God. He sits at the right hand of God. He who humbled himself, and he expects us to humble ourselves, was exalted, given a name above all names. Now sit at the right hand of God, that at the sound of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of those in heaven, on earth, and on the earth, in the earth below. That includes Satan and all his demonic angels. That includes all that. Those in in heaven, on earth, and in the earth below. Praise God. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. 
And verse 11 says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. In other words, as we do the real carrying of our crosses, denying ourselves, is if we become dead to sin, dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is not in anybody else. It is not in Buddha. It is not in Muhammad. It is not in Judaism. It is not in Hinduism or Catholicism or Pope or whatever human being or created thing, idol, and inanimate or animate things, but it is in Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. He says it, and that is the word and the truth told in love. Say, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And verse 12 says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not allow, in other words, the enemy to tempt you to the extent that you were given to the desires of the flesh. You're given to the snares of the enemy, and then you may do that, the enemy, that, that which the enemy is tempting you to do with endurance in faith. Overcome that temptation by becoming dead to sin alive in Christ, rooted in the word of God praying and worshiping and watching on a daily basis so that that enemy that rolls around like a lion, like a lion, it says like a lion, not a lion, ready to pounce on he that is not sober. Peter said, let us be sober, for the enemy rolls around like a lion. Resist him. We are to resist him until he flees, praise God. And do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in its last, praise God. So let us not let sin reign in our mortal bodies. The mortal bodies are these fleshly bodies, praise God. They are mortal. Uh, and then they desire so many things. Sometimes they desire sex. Sometimes they desire food when you're supposed to be fasting. They desire all kinds of things. And so those desires, they lead you to do things. They lead you to either fornicate or commit adultery, commit all the sins of the world, uh, pornography, commit... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, idolatry, uh, steal, murder for money, uh, that you may satisfy the desires of the flesh. People do those things to satisfy the desires of the flesh. Homosexuality, all, there's a, all that is sin, witchcraft, sorcery, divination. And that sin can only take you to hell. It does not take you to heaven. According to the word of God in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Praise God. As a matter of fact, let's go to 1 Corinthians while we're there. Very briefly, 6, 9 to 10, and I have about four minutes. It says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. If you are a believer and you were doing those things, do not backslide. He says, and such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Please, God. So when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, which Christ said, must be born of water and spirit, you were sanctified with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, the water in the word, and the Spirit sanctified you because that is the work of the Holy Spirit. It purified you. Took out all the, the 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 filthiness and continues to do a work in each and every one of us even today. Praise God. That's why we must submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Praise God. And so He says in verse twelve, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you obey that you should obey in His lash and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God, meaning that your body as a temple, every member of your body should be used for the glory of God. Praise God. Precisely that. Your eyes, your nose, everything. Praise God. Even the sexual organs, you don't use them for evil. Sexual immorality, adultery, and fornication. I'm going to say because this is part of the instrument. Yes. Eyes, do not use them to watch pornography, to watch evil. Do not use your mouth for gossip. Do not use your ears to listen to gossip, to watch anything that is not of God. Do not use your hands to kill. These are the instruments of your body. Praise God. 
and now as a temple of the Spirit of the living God, because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And what has the temple of the Holy Spirit got to do with an idol? In 2 Corinthians 6, 6, 6, 16, it says, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, it says, anybody that defiles the temple of the Spirit of the living God, and because you are the body of Christ, and now you are a temple of the Spirit of the living God, you belong to God. Anybody that defiles the temple of the Spirit of the living God will be destroyed. So understand that your body now belongs to Christ. When I got that revelation, I said, wow. So as you're moving, you're walking, you are part of the temple. You, you are a temple. Your body is a temple. You belong to Christ. And therefore, anything you do with the body, with your mouth, your eyes, everything, it must glorify God. If you're married, it sex is within a marriage. You do not commit adultery. If you're not married, a fornication is evil. We just saw that, praise God. Wait until you're married. Homosexuality is evil. We just saw that. Anything that is evil. And in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, it says, what has the temple of the Spirit of the living God got to do with idols? It is sanctified. Praise God. And so he says in verse 13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, having been forgiven and forgotten all the sin and unrighteousness. Do not go back to it, praise God. You are dead to sin. You are alive from the dead, alive in Christ, dead to sin. And that was all the sinfulness has been buried on the cross, praise God, with Christ. And now you're alive because Christ is alive. And the life that he lives, he lives to God. You must also live a life that lives that is based on a consecration, presented daily as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, praise God. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace, under the grace of God, praise God. Sin in uh, under the law, bread, death, anybody that sinned was, was killed. And so people who are living a religious life, who are living a life of religiosity, you are insane. All the uh, doctrines of men and the traditions of men under grace, and grace doesn't mean that you should go on sinning, under grace, and that means under Christ, by grace through faith, you must follow the leadership of Christ and stand in firm on the word of God. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't have enough time, but go with me to Ephesians 5. And we're going to complete. Uh, okay, in the, max, uh, in the next uh, five or so, yes. Ephesians 5, verse 8 to 20. Praise God. Ephesians 5, verse 8 to 20 says... For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Praise God. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. What is acceptable to the Lord? By being transformed in the mind on a daily basis. Not being conformed to the world, but being transformed in the mind, as Paul says in Romans 12, verse 22. Praise God. That you may know that which is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So the transformation of the mind, the changing of your mindset, as by the Spirit, not in your own mind and power, but by the Spirit, as you read the Word of God, as the Holy Spirit works in and through you and gives you deliverance, leads you to walking in the righteousness of God and the perfect will of God. Praise God. That which is acceptable to the Lord. And verse 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. You are to expose the unfruitful works of the enemy, just as Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, and which he did on the cross. As born-again believers, he expects us to expose the works of the enemy, not judgingly, not condemningly, but expose them that others may be warned so that they do not fall in the ditch. If you keep the light under the bow and do not put it on the hill, he said Christ, how are others who are in darkness going to sin? Say, my people are dying because of lack of knowledge. Some have rejected the message. But we who have the knowledge, we must share it lovingly and in truth uh, that they may not fall into the ditch. Praise God. Those who are in darkness, that they may come to the light. Praise God. And so in verse 13, it says, verse 12, it says, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. It is shameful for me to talk about some of these things. And I know that some people are doing them. I did some of those things. This guy, most of those things, 
And God now is working in and through me, praise God, to bring others to Christ, even as he continues to work in me, praise God. Yeah, I cannot say I can't go to a drunkard. I can't. I used to be a drunkard. And I have to preach the message to those who are drunk, the drunkards, so that they may come to the revelation of the truth, praise God. Praise the Son of God. In verse uh, 12, it says, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light, praise God. And that's what he expects us as believers to do as the sword and the light of the world, so that people may see the light, praise God. Please understand it's not about judging you, about judging what you're doing. It's not about it condemning you. But Christ came to call sinners to repentance, understand that that is the truth in love. And God wants each and every one of us, he does not desire that any perish, but that we all come to full repentance, to repent of our sins and come back to the ship for to the Father. Praise God. He said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions, meaning in his kingdom, the kingdom of our Father, there are many mansions. And I go to prepare a place, he said, for you. So anybody that believes is going to be a special place for you when all is said and done, praise God, for you and I, praise God. And that's why I preach this gospel, praise God. And so he says, therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light, and light comes from Christ. And verse 15 says, see then, 15 says, see then that you walk circumspe circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, praise God. In the power of the wise and the foolish virgins, it talks about this. And the wise virgins had oil in their lamps. The foolish virgins did not have oil in their lamps. And when the bridegroom came for the, the, the his bride, and that is the church, those who were wise and had oil in their lamps, they had anointed, they were walking in the calling of God, and, and pure and holy, they were let in. And those who were not wise, they were not let in. And so he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, praise God. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of God, praise God. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. For all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Friend, just understand that Christ made captivity captive. Those who are bound to sin and unrighteousness. On the cross, he made captivity captive and set us free. What does it mean, captivity captive? Those who are captive to the enemy, under the bondage of slavery to sin and unrighteousness. Christ now makes it possible for us. He made it possible already by grace through faith that we partake of it. Praise God. Over 2,000 years, he did it. He said it is finished. Now it is up to us to have the revelation and partake of that grace, walk in that grace. Praise God. In that freedom uh, through the knowledge of the truth. Praise God. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Shall set you free. In John 8, 32, he says, uh, for whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So it is Christ who sets us free, no other, praise God. And so in Ephesians 4, 8, it says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Those gifts are going to be resurrected. If you recognize that you are a sinner, repent of your sins, accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and then God is going to begin to use you in mighty ways in that gift and calling that he purposed for you and I. That's what precisely he's talking about. In fact, in 9, he says, now this he ascended. What does it mean that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He had to descend into the lower parts of the earth. Praise God. He died on the cross and was buried on the third day. He was from the dead. The word of God that was there in the beginning was with God, was God, who created everything, who came down from heaven, came down to earth and took on sin for creation, was crucified on the cross for you and I. The Lamb of God that was slain for the of sin and shed his precious blood for you and I is who we are talking about. That led captivity, captive, and that he, the gifts that he has purpose for us, God our Father's purpose for us, may be resurrected that we may do that which he has called us to do. Praise God. And he says in verse 11, praise God. Verse 10, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens. He ascended into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Praise God. That he might feel all things. Praise God. And when he promised that he shall receive power, yes, 
power came to the disciples. Same power continues to come to each and every one of us that have been called according to his purpose. Praise God. And he says in verse 11, and he himself gave some, he himself, Christ, the head of the church, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature, of the fullness of Christ. And he wants to use each and every one of us, you and I, even as he's using me now. And I, I haven't, I don't believe I've lived to my full potential. Every day I grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength. It is by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, Come to the kingdom of God like a child, and God is going to continue to fill you and reveal to you the deep things of God and use you in mighty ways. Praise the Son of the God. He wants to use you. You may be an evangelist, an apostle, a teacher, a prophet of God, a man of God, a, a, a great man of God, a pastor, a, a, a prayer warrior, a worship leader, a business person, doesn't matter. Matter whatever your calling is, that calling, that gift that God has put in your heart will be resurrected if you become born again. Please, God, I'm going to close with prayer. But please go ahead and read the rest of that. Praise God. And 14 talks about the cunningness and the false prophets and the false doctrines that are in the world. So read about that, praise God. But I'm going to close in prayer uh, because the purpose of this was to really let you know that you need to become born again and do not listen to the false prophets and the false teachers. Christ is the only way, the truth, and life. Praise God. And so if you haven't accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior yet, please accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. All you have to do is repent of your sins and say these words with me. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Anything I've said or done or thought that does not glorify your name, I pray that you forgive me. I pray in the, in the mighty name of Jesus and that you cleanse and wash me with the blood of your son jesus i recognize that jesus christ is the son your son that you sent you so loved us that you sent your son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life i accept you jesus christ as my personal lord and savior come take charge over my heart and now from now on i do believe that if i die and i wake up i'll be in your arms give me your holy spirit so that i may live the life that is acceptable to you, Lord, that is in your will for the rest of my life going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. That, friends, once you've repented, ask for the forgiveness of your sins, makes you a child of God once you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart. You must believe in your heart. We believe unto righteousness. You confess in your, with your mouth, for we confess unto salvation that Christ died on the cross. So we believe that Christ died on the cross and arose from the dead by the Father. So believe, once you believe, then you'll be saved. Praise God. God bless you abundantly. I'm going to close. I'm going to be away until Tuesday. Praise God. Uh, uh, Monday is the day for my um, uh, sitting with the Lord and uh, studying the word and praising and worship. So uh, Monday, I'm not going to be available um, from, uh, uh, I think it's been about two or three weeks now. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know. So Mondays we won't have Bible studies, um, but Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we will be having Bible studies. Praise God. God bless you abundantly. And I hope that you have been um, blessed with this teaching. And I trust that God is continuing to do a work in each and every one of us and use us in mighty ways, sanctify us so that when Christ returns, he'll find us blameless in spirit, soul, and body. God bless you. I cover you in the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ about your family, your ministry, your finances. If there's anybody with any kind of sickness, any sickness of any, any, any nature, I pray that you be healed supernaturally in the name of Jesus. I cast out every demonic oppression, even in your marriage, and if you're going through any kind of marriage issues, marital issues, I pray that you're delivered supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. Any spirit of religion of any sort, let it be bound in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, Anything that is anti Christ, I command it to leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be made whole in spirit, soul, and body. According to what I got in 3 John 1 2, but Thessalonians 5 23, Christ was wounded. According to Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, for our transgressions and bruises, for our iniquities, the chastisement that brought peace was upon him. By his stripes, I pray for your healing, your total healing in spirit, soul, and body. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, 
I have prayed it. Praise the Son of the Living God. God bless you abundantly, and we will learn some more next week.